Good evening. My name is Matt Pulowski and I'm a student with Grand Canyon University Cybersecurity Master's Program. Tonight I'm going to be discussing secure network architecture design. The topics I will be discussing tonight are the network diagram that I created, the scan reports from the Greenbone Vulnerability Manager that I performed on my virtual machine infrastructure, and last, I will briefly discuss some advanced networks and protocols that are changing the way security is being conducted. This is the corporate infrastructure diagram that I created for this class. In the top left corner here, you'll see the internet. The internet is connected to our demilitarized zone. Our demilitarized zone stands outside of our main firewall, which also contains our intrusion protection system and our intrusion detection system. The main firewall and the internal internet provides information to the DMZ, which is able to be accessed by people on the internet. The internet is also connected to an external router and then to our main firewall. The internal network starts with an internal network router, which is placed inside of that main firewall. From there, you notice that we have a switch that leads to another firewall. This firewall is the server firewall, which acts as a secondary and last protection system for our servers, our mail server and our DHCP server. Going back to our internal network router, we also have a proxy server. Now, the proxy server acts also as a firewall for our workstations. You'll notice that from our proxy server, we have three sets of switches. These sets of switches lead to our different work departments and work groups, sales, accounting, human resources, and manufacturing. Each of these work groups contain a variety of workstations. There are workstations that are desktop workstations, laptop workstations, and cell phone workstations. With how, with how the workplace is revolving, including with how the workplace is evolving, including work from home, working from work, and doing work on your cell phone, I think it's important to acknowledge that all three of these types of devices are going to be need, be connected to our internal network. The final department is our research and development department, which has its own switch. The connection for the research and development department is unique because it has an air gap system. This means that transmissions between the rest of the network and the research and development department only happen when they're being monitored by an authorized user. This research and development department also has the same workstations, laptop workstations, and cell phone workstations. However, this department is more self-contained and isolated from the rest of the network. The Greenbone Vulnerability Manager is a vulnerability scanner that is part of the Kali Linux system. I use this vulnerability scanner to scan different parts of my virtual machine infrastructure. My virtual machine infrastructure included a PFSense firewall, a Windows 2019 server, a Windows 10 machine, a Kali Linux machine, a Ubuntu machine, and a Windows 11 machine. I initially attempted to scan all of the virtual machines using one scan. However, after several hours, the scan had only progressed to about 10% and needed to change my thinking. Instead of one scan, I conducted multiple scans of each component of the infrastructure. This is a typical scan result for my vulnerability scans, which shows the important information such as operating systems, trace route, IP forwarding, IP address, host name, and other information about the systems. However, my scans have not shown what ports are open or closed, what applications are running, what TLS certificates are active, or other information that would be helpful. None of my scans have returned with a major vulnerability, which means that my firewall and security settings are working to prevent intrusion. Some of the advanced networks are cloud networks, which are provided by cloud providers. 
These networks allow users to store their data in the cloud, run programs from the cloud, and many additional processes. These cloud networks are changing the way the data is stored, computer processes are run, and business is conducted. The cloud eliminates the need for expensive hardware, since the cloud can provide solutions for many situations. However, the security is provided by the cloud provider with little or no input or customization by the user. Edge computing involves cloud computing because the theory is that the processes are carried out in the cloud near to the workstation that requested them. This means that the cloud data needs to be stored near the user as well. Edge computing uses less energy since the data is nearby and is fast since the program carries out the task in the cloud near the user. Some other advanced networking options are virtual machines and cell phones. There are already some Linux systems that can be placed on cell phones and virtual machines are becoming more common within the workplace. Here are some resources if you have additional questions. Please reach out to me with any additional questions that you might have and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thank you.